thousands of such jobs as these dot the map of the United States, giving work and hope to people who can't find jobs. We're here in front of the biodiesel plant at BioLiberty, and we're going to be dismantling it. And we're going to now move it into New Orleans. The Veterans Green Job Alliance has bought BioLiberty's uh, capacity to make biodiesel in its training program to work with other veterans in uh, a funded pilot project uh, that's starting off in April of 2009. Half a dozen trained volunteer rescue teams in heavy-duty trucks and ducks are answering the first calls for help. Streets are flooded. We are cut off from the outside world in our motel here. With communication cut off, the full extent of the disaster was unknown for days. How to get necessary food and medical supplies into the storm zone became a major question. Survivors are stumbling out of the shelters, and help begins pouring in. We uh, came down here the day after Hurricane Katrina. And that was a bunch of veterans, medically trained veterans. And we brought down here a bus with uh, a satellite internet access cameras computers and a bunch of medically trained personnel and we started doing the relief work yes we need rescue units but trained self-contained rescue units we can't feed them we can't sleep them and tell them to bring their own water with any disaster response you need you need to be able to come in with everything you need that's a key ingredient to our buses is having them be self-contained so the crew we bring in don't need anything else they don't need to be re rescued themselves, and they have the ability to expand into an entire volunteer camp by having the ability to cook for a large group of people, camp a large group of people, and provide internet communications for a large group of people, and uh, the core group that knows enough about everything that they can organize a larger group that comes in once you set up camp. These groups of men working shoulder to shoulder were gathered from every sort of work project, and they stopped their grueling labor only long enough to refuel their systems with sandwiches and coffee. The training program is also, you know, there's this component of being restorative work. And so this provides them an opportunity to continue to serve the country by learning how to live sustainably. All the veterans will go through a multimedia course where they'll learn the basic computer skills to do video, audio, uh, web blogging, uh, the basic communications. Everybody's going to have that. Everybody's going to have the hazmat training. They'll be adding on the green technology, the, the energy efficiency uh, certification courses while they go through um, making biodiesel and learning the rest of the program. So we'll have a core group at the end of a year and a half that are capable of setting up similar programs throughout the country. So within three years, we could have one in every state. Well, in the uh, community college programs, we'll be able to uh, exercise the GI Bill to help these veterans out. The welfare of the community served by a new construction project is always the first consideration, and plans are laid not only for the present, but for the more demanding future and permanent improvements to a host of communities for the years to come. This all boils down to getting a job, you know. Veterans coming back need to get jobs that are going to sustain themselves in the future. And green construction, green fuel, green lifestyle is um, what's going to sustain the United States and, in fact, the world. So there's a whole bunch of careers that somebody going through our program can get exposed to. Biodiesel and ethanol production, solar geothermal installation and maintenance of the mechanicals for heating and cooling and electrifying a house. Green construction methods, they'll be learning hazmat and uh, first responder courses that are certified by FEMA so that they will be able to take on uh, first responder contracts after a disaster. The veterans are going to work on the buses themselves, so they're going to learn how to convert a bus to run on grease. They're going to learn how to outfit it with all the technologies for communications. They're going to be exercising those buses and training with those buses, setting up for mock disasters, or in fact, if we do have a disaster, we're going to put everybody in the bus and we're going to head straight into it. That's the benefit of having, you know, veterans, first of all, and then having medically trained personnel right from the start is that we're a value when we first go in. The business training that's involved with all of this, you know, whether it's making a biodiesel company where you're recycling used cooking oil for your community or you know, there's plumbing, electrical. Another part of the training component with Delgado is energy efficiency testing and certification. So 
uh, vets will go through a, sh a short training program. It's about a week long, but they'll be certified to ass uh, do assessments on homes and businesses, get paid for that, and that information goes to help the owner uh, develop an energy efficiency plan to improve an existing property or know where to go when building in something new. We'll save taxpayers $2 billion a year by making 75% of federal buildings more energy efficient and save the average working family $350 on their energy bills by weatherizing 2.5 million homes. So we think we're on, right on the in the right in the front row to get our veterans into a job training program that's going to be sustainable in the future. Though you're going to get exposed to all the green technologies and the first responder training to be of value wherever they go, and uh, through that exposure, they're going to find a job that interests them that they might want to take into a career. And these are jobs that can't be exported, so you know. They're really making an investment in not only their future, but the future of America and our ecology. Volunteer rescue teams are coming in from everywhere. The monstrous job of cleanups begun. And more than 8,000 military men, Army, CBs, National Guard, Corps of Engineers, are pitching in to help out. We want to develop a crew of dedicated veterans that want to expand this training and take it state by state by state. And so where it goes from there is really going to be up to the veterans. We're going to make sure that they're partners in the, both the training program and then the, hopefully the businesses that develop outside of that. Medics are the best trained to get into this program first. You know, once the program gets up and running and, and we have a group of hardcore trainers that want to stick with us, then we'll bring in other veterans that want to go through the same thing and participate in disaster preparedness and response. This takes plumbers, electricians, uh, it takes solar panels, it takes geothermal wells, it takes heat pumps, it takes the green mechanicals to make it all work, and all the training and certification that is required to make it work right. And so we need partnerships with both the industry and the trade unions to put all the tools in one basket for a veteran. It's imperative that people come with an idea of dedication like they had in the military. You know, the, the concept of uh, service for uh, protecting oil life. The other veterans organizations, they can sponsor a veteran going through this program. So that's what we're doing and uh, I'd certainly like to have your help. Uh, VGA is not just doing a place, uh, a pilot project in New Orleans, they're also doing it in Colorado, Washington, and looking for other states to uh, put vets to work in doing green jobs. Thank you, Mobile Broadcast News. We need corporate sponsors. We need foundations. You know, when you really value the service of a veteran, it, it really helps to show it when they come home. This is a veteran-run organization that keeps all the resources in the ground, on the ground, but the boots that are there. We'll rebuild. Just build a little stronger. We got a beautiful country down here. We'll make it beautiful again.
Mm. Say goodbye. We'll see you later. Sit. Good girl. Bye bye. I'm sorry. I'll be back in two weeks, okay? I gotta go to Vegas. People want to see me in Vegas, D. Yeah, they think we might want to move over there. At least for the winners, start another vet still. What do you think? You want to start another vet still in Vegas? We got pretty lights in Vegas. Not cold. It's not cold. It's not cold in Vegas. Well, on the way to Vegas, we'll see uh, what Pahrump, Nevada has to offer and meet with Life Services and see what we could do about building a Veterans Green Village in Pahrump and Service Vegas in Southern Nevada. So, uh, gonna do a little self-deployment with the Veterans Green Village. See if we could recruit more people to get certified for disaster response, get them TR ready. But in the meantime, get them green. So that's the mission, that's the plan. We'll see you in Vegas. You my Uber ride? Are you my Uber ride? You got it, you going to Cali? Uh, actually, I'm going to Vegas. Oh yeah, Vegas first. Vegas first, then Cali. Yeah, Cali. Uh, all right, all right. We got you there. Ooh, that was close. All right. <laughs> I'm doing well. All right. Where's your masks? Uber up. Oh, man. Mask up, brothers. This all the masks I got. Gonna do what? I, what else I need to be done? Let me know when you um, when you're down there. You know, I know well, take care of D. Basically, Detroit Red. You gotta take care of her. She's got a full uh, bag of dog food. There's a full dish, full water. Okay. Floors mopped. Everything's clean. Trash is oh, yeah, empty. Yeah. Set those bombs off. Take her home for a day or two. Set those bombs off. Okay. So yeah. Them, yeah. For sure. Kill all the bugs. That's what's up. Um. I'll be back the 21st of December. Okay. Uh, just in time for Christmas. All right. Thank and you I so much. I'm trying to get me. the grease rolling, man. You know? Time to get the grease rolling. I'm sure the grease rolling. Since you'll be up there. You know, so. We're holding the fort now. Why you gone? I appreciate and it. And you build the fort. You got to. Yeah. Why somebody's got to watch my back while I go get. In the front. You're right. You're right. You're right. That's a nice camera, man. What you got there? Uh, you, I three eyes on there. Four. <laughs> Look like a spider. <laughs> So I got my laptop out for the uh, security. I got my headphones ready to uh, not listen to anybody else. I got my mask on. I got another layer. I think that hurt. Attention passengers. Yep. When processing through the security checkpoint, please remove everything from your pockets and place them inside your carry-on luggage or in the gray security bin. This includes all paper items, plastic items, pens, and bottles. Thank you for your cooperation. You're welcome. I guess that means my sunglasses too. Put that in there and get Jake's book put away. Thanks, Jake. I'll uh, be reading this on the plane in Vegas over the week. So I'll get that in there. Right. There we pop out for the flight. That's there. Pockets are empty. Going all the directions. Thank you, Southwest. Thank you, Face Services of Vegas. Thank you, Blake Busters. Thank you, Team Rubicon.
See you guys soon. Thank you. 